Good morning everyone. So it's Boxing Day today. A lot of nice food was eaten yesterday, so I'm feeling a little bit... Oh, we'll call it under the weather, shall we? So I think we'll take it nice and easy today. Um, following on from the last video with our 3D printed shifter bushes. I'm showing you the shifter, you can't see the bushes. They're under, the, under all the trim. Today, we're going to continue working on our shifter feel by replacing the rear motor mount on this car. So coming around to the back of the MR2, Underneath, I've just laid some wood down to give myself something nice to kneel on. Under here, this is our rear motor mount. And if we look at it from the side, you'll see that some of the rubber is slightly perished. Um, this isn't the worst motor mount that I've seen, but it's also not the best. So, we're going to stick that Powerflex Lotus kit, which I sort of teased to you guys earlier on. So we'll pop into the workshop now and I'll just show you the kit itself and what tools we're going to need to get the job done. Right, we're in the workshop now. I've just laid the kit out on the table. This is again the Lotus Exige slash Elise 111R rear motor mount kit. And we're going to prove it today that the MR2 does have some sporting heritage and it can accept Lotus parts. So, in the box, these are the four pieces that you receive in the kit. You get two Powerflex, um, these are the yellow, so sort of medium. I think they generally recommend it for track and street. Um, this kit only comes in the yellow, but other Powerflex kits do come in different colors for different sort of degrees of harshness. You also get these two large plastic washers. These will, essentially they just serve as some protection. They'll protect the material and help you clamp everything in place. So, tools you're gonna to need to do the job. Um, number one, a bit of penetrant fluid. I've been spraying these bolts down for the past week or so, just every time I've been out with the car, I'll give them a quick blast. Um, 20 year old bolts and nuts, you're gonna run into some sort of corrosion at some point. So I just like to stay ahead of the game, keep stuff looped up like this, and then it should come out nice and easy for us when we go to do it actual tools we're going to need. Um, for the first step, you'll need a 17mm shallow socket and a 17mm spanner, and I'll show you what they're for later. You'll also need a 14mm. I recommend the deep socket just because of the placement of the bolts and how we're going to reach them. And you will need a ratchet. But this is a super nice straightforward job, so we'll get ourselves under the car and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, back outside with the car now. Um, one final tool you may need is a jack. There's two reasons you might need it. Um, in my case though, I have actually chosen to jack up the car. This is a job you can do without jacking the vehicle up. Um, jacking point for the MR2 is in fact the engine mount. Just place your jack on this piece right here. So just along there. Um, you'll notice that I'm jacking up on gravel. I've given the car a really good shake. I'm confident it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, and then I've placed the jack stands underneath the factory jacking points and given the car a very good shake. Um, in my case, this 17mm nut on the left side of the engine mount and this 17mm bolt are giving me quite a bit of trouble. So I've just lifted the car up to give myself more room so I can swing a hammer around, hit my spanners. And once I've snapped these free, I will show you how to deal with these 14mm bolts as well. There's four of them either side. Okay guys, you're back under the car with me now. Um, I've had some trouble with this bolt and then it's corresponding nut on this side. The astute among you will realize that that bolt is losing its hexagonal shape quite quickly and becoming round. So, I've changed the order of operations a bit. I've removed these two 14 mil bolts on this side and I've just placed them on the ground over here where I won't lose them. And I'm just gonna remove these two as well um, what I've noticed is the engine has not actually sagged down, well, pretty much at all um, with the removal of this mount, and that's because it is still mounted um, with the other two mounts. They're holding it in place nicely. You've got the front one just down there. It is that bolt, is where it bolts to the chassis, and then the gearbox mounts as well off to the sides. So what we can do is support the gearbox with a jack just here. This is a nice strong surface. I would not recommend jacking the car up from here but you can jack just the gearbox back up if this does start to sag. And what I'll try and do is just remove the entire assembly to give me better access to these two 
um, and I'll let you know how I get on with that. Okay guys, so, bit of a development finally. I've managed to break these free. I did not remove the um, engine mount from the car in the end. I was just worried that removing all these nuts and bolts from the gearbox was either going to open a hole up where the gearbox fluid might come out. So, what we've done is I've got a 17mm spanner on this side and by loosening this bolt, which I did with a very, very, very long breaker bar, it has wedged this spanner up against the subframe. Um, one thing to note, it is going to damage my stone ship finish. This is the second subframe this car has had. Um, so it's it, like it's been replaced once, um, which is why these four bolts came out nice and easily because they've only been in for, I don't know, 18 months or so. So I will touch up this finish just because these cars are known to rot out their subframes and I want to avoid that because that's quite a big job. But anyways, um, all we're doing now, I've come back with a high quality socket as well. The nut itself was all right. Uh, it's a nut on this side, bolt head on this side where the spanner is. So high quality socket, because uh, this is tight and we're just backing it off like so. And as you can see, the engine mount will bring itself free. So I'll just continue cracking on with this. It shouldn't be too much longer. You can see the engine's not supported by anything. Um, and in hindsight, I would strongly recommend you leave these four bolts in place because <laughs> Obviously, they hold all the rest of the um, the rest of the mount sort of in situ, but I need both hands, so I'll crack on. I'll get this out, get it to the workbench, and show you how to install the inserts. Okay, back inside now at the table. Here is our engine mount. As you can see, it has been freed from the car. Um, the rubber isn't looking too bad. There was a decent amount of flex in it. The bolt was not seized onto the metal um, sleeve inside, so. In my case, this mount's actually in reasonably good health. Um, other cars I've seen, this does perish. It just depends how the car is used, how it's stored. Um, I do try and keep my undercarriage quite clean in winter, um, which does help prolong the life of your bushes. Okay, you guys are gonna learn with me. As you can see in the kit, these two pieces are identical, um, but they do only go in one way. The way I've worked it out is this gap here is shorter than this gap here, and that will tell us which way around it wants to go in the engine mount. It should be as simple as pressing it in, just with our hands. Um, don't know how much persuasion it's gonna take. I'm hoping we'll just be able to squeeze it right in. Yep. And there we are, look, lovely. We'll just flip it over and do the other side. You do not need to get this perfect right now. These um, backing plates will sort of finish that job off for us when we bolt it into the car. Okay guys, slight interruption there. Family wanted to come and see how we were getting on, but we seem to get on well. Um, as you can see, this hasn't sat in all the way, but you're gonna learn with me here. I'm gonna leave it like that. I believe that when we bolt it back together, these washers will finish that job off for us in squeezing it all down. So I'm quite happy to leave it as so. Whoops, dropping nuts and bolts. I am going to, speaking of the nuts and bolts, just give this one a quick wire brush. One thing to note, when you are brushing threads, you wanna be very careful just to chase them around. If you start scrubbing like crazy, it's very easy to start upsetting all of your threads. So I'm just gonna give this a little blast with probably the WD-40 penetrant fluid I had earlier. Just go over it with the wire brush, just to clean things up, and then I have some grease um, ready to go in it as well. And that will just stop what I mentioned, having it seize in this metal sleeve. Anybody who's done any suspension work to a car and a car as old as this will know that a lot of the time, you do get bolts corroding onto the metal sleeve inside a bush and that's when servicing your vehicle becomes extremely difficult and you need to move away from nuts and bolts and into fire and angle grinders, which is something I like to avoid. So I'll be back in a bit. You'll join me next under the car with some clean nuts and bolts and we'll get ready to throw this back in. Okay guys, you join me back under the car. We're putting the car back together in the correct order of operations now. So. I'm just going to do up the four 14mm bolts, the two on this side. Excuse the lighting. That's these two, and then these two on this side. 
Um, I've just threaded them in my fingers and then because I'm a little bit lazy, just going to buzz them up. Uh, oh, righty tighty does help. That's one. That's two. This one's going to need to be done by a hand tool and I've already done the one in the back corner here. Okay guys, a bit of a take two for this one. Um, what I tried to do originally was I bolted the four 14 millimeter bolts here and here um, up to the car without these washers in place. However, your mileage may vary, just depends on the condition of your rubber bushes. Um, where mine doesn't quite fit, apologies for the lighting, but where I have gaps coming in here, um, which is just down to the shape of my rubber. Um, again, every car is gonna be different. Um, I then, with these four bolts in place, couldn't get these two black washers around. So I've dropped the mount back out. It comes in and out nice and easily now. Um, it does just take a good amount of wiggling once you have it all in place to get these washers and the four bolts to all line up nicely. Because obviously the motor mount is offset slightly now. The motor itself has moved. Um, I have been jacking the motor up and down using this strong piece of metal here. This is the mount it uses anyways. So you are free to jack off of this bar either side. Um, and just moving things around until I can get all the bolts to line up nicely to avoid any cross threading. Okay guys, so what I've done now, um, as you can see the jack is supporting the engine mount. The lighting's quite poor so you can't quite see it, but just the very edge of the jack is lifting the engine up via the mount. And then I have run the bolt through. The bolt's on this side, washer on this side as well. That's the driver's side of the car. And I've wound the nut onto the passenger side of the car just as far as I could get it. I will now remove the jack from the mount. And on this side, you can see the mount a bit better. This bar here is a great place to jack the engine from. You can do it either side. I just did it on the driver's side because that's where I was already. Um, I'll now lower the jack down. You can see a slight impression in the metal. That's where the nut and bolt want to sit naturally. That's the engine in its lowest state. Uh, and so that's where it's going to make the most sense to sort of tighten everything back down to just so that then our original bolts and bushes don't have any tension sort of twisted into them. You don't want to hold anything under any tension. So we'll let it all rest with gravity and then we'll tighten everything up where it wants to be. And then I'll try and find a place to stick you in the car and we'll take it for a little road test. Okay guys, so we're in the car now. I'm gonna take you out on a quick road test. I'll leave you in the vehicle for the initial start as well. But what we're gonna look for for this road test is this is the first time driving the car with the new 3D printed shifter cage bushes and the Powerflex Lotus engine mount. So ideally my main goal for this was cleaning up the gear change because it was just a bit sloppy when you're under full load. But because we've installed much harsher engine mounts, I'm also looking to see how much more NVH, so that's noise vibration and harshness we've brought into the cabin. The engine is mounted much more rigidly to the chassis. So I just wanna see this being my daily car, if that's a change that I want to live with um, and how much it's going to be worth it when I compare it from track use to just daily use. So we'll start the car up in just a second. Um, I do also have quite a few vibration rattles. A video we're going to do later in the week is me just um, putting the interior of the car back together. I've got a rattle in a door card um, and I've got various bits of trim just flying around behind me. Anyway, so we're going to keep an eye on all those things and just see how much the sort of quality of life has been affected in sort of in a ratio compared to how much the driving experience has been improved. So we'll start the car up now and just have a feel. And yeah, already that's a lot more vibration. I'm sure you can see the cameras moving. The, um... wow, yeah, okay. So I'm experiencing a bit more boom. There was actually a notable bang as the starter motor engaged. Part of that will have been the engine just settling into where it wants to be. Um, now that the engine's been running for just a few seconds, we'll give it a tiny rev. And yeah, so I can feel there's more feedback from the engine. Obviously feedback is what I'm after. Um, so we'll just have to see. I'll be honest, I am skeptical right now. This does seem a touch extreme, but it does also feel very race car. Um, another thing to note though is I am in a bucket seat. I am mounted literally metal to metal with the chassis so what I'm feeling is going to be a worst case experience. In stock seats you'd get less vibration to you but more information to the driver is always a good thing in a performance driving scenario. So I'll take the car out, I'll get it warmed up and I'll bring you back when we're ready to start testing. 
Okay guys, so I've just had the car warmed up a little bit now. Uh, I'm in a nice quiet lay-by on a quiet stretch of road so we can get away with a couple of pulls and there's a quiet village section at the end so we can drive through at sort of normal speeds. Um, I'll just let standard traffic go by but so far impressions are excellent. Um, just the sort of dynamics of having the motor mounted more securely to the chassis has I'm sure it's slightly placebo, but it feels like there is some sort of chassis bracing going on. The car just feels a lot stiffer, more responsive, and just freshened up in general. So I'm really happy with that. Um, in terms of noise, I've had a slight vibration come in behind me. It has always been there, um, but a lot of the time it was fading away. The only other thing I've noticed is if the revs drop below what I would call a, a healthy idle. So if you, I don't know, pull away off the clutch a bit aggressively and the revs bog slightly, then you do get a lot of vibration as the engine starts to bog down and wobble around. But outside of that, the um, noise has been increased, but I wouldn't call it to a degree that it's um, any more intrusive than it would be. I've got the GoPro set into sort of its hyper smooth mode as much as I can get away with. Um, but this car, I haven't touched on it much. We are rolling on BC racing coilovers. So the ride and vibration is quite harsh anyway. This is more of a race car than a street car these days. Um, for me, I absolutely love it. Some people, I can see why it might be a bit too much. But now that we've got some free road, I'll pull away. Um, I'll leave this footage in. It may be pretty much unviewable, and if it is that way, I apologize. The car is just quite shaky. Um, and one other thing I do want to think about is axle tramp. Because the engine's over the rear axle, um, when you pull away with the softer engine mounts, sometimes you can have it where the rear wheels will start to bounce up and down over the road as opposed to spinning nicely. And I'm hoping, I'm not going to do a massive wheel spin launch right now, but I am hoping that another effect this will have is to reduce axle tramp. So I shall just let this car that's coming up behind me now get away. Um, and while I'm putting the car into gear actually, the 3D printed shifter mounts, the shifter cage mounts have made a huge difference. Um, uh, shifts just feel a lot more direct going into gear um, and it's just overall a lot crispier so a lot of quality of life improvements and it's cost me half an hour of 3d print time and 30 pounds for the engine mount so overall this is a great mod to do to freshen up an aging MR2 um, you might have heard that there that was the engine mounts where I let the clutch dip a bit early but let's go for it shaking around lots and you can hear how loud my car is. We'll just bring it up to 60 and third. And aggressive gear change. It's so much smoother than it used to be. I'm so thrilled with this one. And getting it into fifth and sixth, the gear stick just feels so much nicer. Go back into fifth, third. It almost gives the effect of an upgraded clutch actually. Coming up to a 30, so I'll heal and toe down. So much crispier the driving experience to be honest has been I'm not gonna say it's been revolutionized I, I can see the camera going nuts I am sorry if this is unwatchable um, but it is so much nicer than it used to be I'm, I'm very happy with this okay we're out of the village now I was waiting for the smoothest possible bit of road but there really isn't any I'm currently doing 35 and a 60 in third gear so I'll just sort of downshift it into second and we'll go for a pull and I'll try and convey how the car feels, but let's go for it.
and just sort of in the audio areas as well. That's a stupid way of saying that, but what I can hear is a lot more detailed and everything feels a lot more crispy. So I get a lot more feedback from the car and it just means we can work together to be faster a lot more easily. So there we are. That's the sort of first test drive done. I'm thrilled with those. The, um, Motor mounts definitely added some stiffness, but they've made the car feel a lot more sort of refreshed and new. Um, you do feel it when you start the car, there's a noticeable bang sort of as the starter motor just engages and you get that initial vibration from the engine. But in terms of throttle modulation, clutch control, um, and just general drivability and driver feedback, I'd say the car is nearly transformed. Coupled with the 3D printed shifter cage mounts, um, you get a much cleaner gear change as well. But just in terms of keeping the car settled in between a full throttle and off throttle um, sort of state, like in a gear change event, you get a lot more sort of crispy feedback from the car. It's a lot faster, it's a lot more direct, and you get a lot less of the sort of um, rotational inertia of the engine spinning around. Um, it just upsets the car a lot less as you go in between those states, sort of like if you change gear in a corner or during a roundabout, which you shouldn't generally do in a mid-engine car, but there are times where you have to do it. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to using this in an auto solo. I think it's going to really make just the sort of transition of power from the engine to the wheels a lot more direct and a lot faster. Um, and it also just makes throttle response that much better that I think it's really going to help the car and its performance. So that's been day three-ish of the Christmas jobs of the MR2. This is Boxing Day. Um, thanks very much for watching. Tomorrow we will do... I think we'll make a start on our sort of brake overhaul with some braided brake lines and getting the front calipers painted to match the rears. So I will see you then.